The local neighborhood of objects near the sun is rather extensive, consisting of small stars, larger ones, brown dwarfs, interstellar objects, and so on. All are interesting in their own right, but some star systems nearby the sun stand out. So here is a sampling of 10 of the nearest systems and what they are like. Number 10. Ross 128. Located at about 11 light years out is the red dwarf star Ross 128. This is a very low mass star at only about 15% of the mass of the sun, and if you were near it, it would look much, much dimmer. But it's also a very old star, determined by low amounts of any elements other than hydrogen and helium, placing it nearly 10 billion years old, twice the age of the sun. Most interestingly is that this star has been found to have a planet. Known as Ross 128b, it's thought to be just slightly larger than Earth. This planet orbits very close to the star and is most likely tidally locked, always presenting the same face to the red dwarf, and seems to be on the inner edge of the habitability zone of Ross 128. The question of whether it might indeed have life is a complicated one. Red dwarfs, when they are young, tend to be violent and flare a lot, disfavoring a world like this from being habitable. Yet Ross 128, while it does flare, is on the quieter side of that due to age. If an atmosphere was able to survive on Ross 128b, then it's conceivable that the conditions might be right for liquid water and life now, or not. Oddly, Ross 128 was also the source for one of SETI's biggest false alarms. In 2017, a radio signal was picked up by the Arecibo Radio Observatory that appeared unnatural and seemingly coming from the star system. The signal wasn't picked up again by other telescopes, but what they did pick up was a lot of human-made interference. Given Ross 128's position in the sky, it turns out that in the same area there are lots of geosynchronous satellites, and it seems most likely that the signal was a satellite downlink, and not likely to have actually originated from the star. Another interesting thing is that Ross 128 is currently moving towards us, and in about 70,000 years it will pass just over 6 light years from the sun. One can imagine that with 70,000 years of technological development, the star may one day be seen very close up by human eyes. Number 9. Epsilon Eridani This star has the distinction of being visible to the unaided eye from most of the surface of the Earth. Located in the constellation Eridanus, this star is about 10.5 light years distant. This star is considerably younger than the Sun, estimated at only about a billion years old. It could be called sun-like, but not very much so, being a type K orange dwarf. Given its youth, this makes for a somewhat more active star with strong solar wind. Epsilon Eridani seems to have a giant exoplanet orbiting it, though this is not fully confirmed, but at this point seems probable. We also know that this system hosts two asteroid belts. While not a certainty, these belts may be maintained by a second planet. We also know that this system has a really extensive debris disk, not unlike our own Kuiper belt which is probably home to planetesimals left over from when Epsilon Eridani formed. In the past, this star has been subject to several science fiction stories and has been periodically checked by SETI just in case, but it's unlikely that this star has had time to develop any kind of intelligent species. Though it may have life itself, it's perhaps in a simple form at this stage, as orange dwarfs seem to be good candidates for habitable planets, and they last significantly longer than stars like our sun do so there will be more time for evolution to do its magic, should there be a suitable world in that system. That's if humans don't colonize any planets that might be there as we spread out into space before intelligence has had a chance to arise on its own there. Number 8. Leuton 726-8 Despite being one of the closest stars to the Sun at 8.7 light years, the system was not discovered until 1948. The system is made up of a pair of very similar red dwarf stars that orbit each other about once every 26 years. The system actually used to be closer to the Sun, at just over 7.2 light years, but has moved away since. Both are flare stars, and in fact one of them serves as the archetype for that class of star, the UV SETI type variable star, but one member of the system is rather extreme in its changes in brightness. In 1952, the star was seen to increase in brightness so rapidly that it increased by 75 times in only 20 seconds. While this double star system doesn't seem likely to have planets, it may actually threaten another entry on this list that might, Epsilon Eridani. 
In just over 30,000 years, this system will pass close enough to Epsilon Eridani to disturb its Oort cloud equivalent. This could send a hail of comets into the Epsilon Eridani system, conceivably setting up an extinction event on any planet that might harbor life there. Number 7. Sirius Sirius is especially noteworthy in that it's the brightest star in the night sky. Sirius is close at only about 8.6 light years, and comprises a binary star system. Interestingly, this system is only going to appear to get brighter for the next 210,000 years, as it moves closer to the solar system. After that, it will gradually dim, until it is no longer the brightest star in the night sky. The system is young, only about 200 to 300 million years old, and consists of the principal star in the system, Sirius A, a bright bluish star about twice the size of the sun, and Sirius B, a white dwarf which just over 100 million years ago swelled into a red giant, and then settled down to become a white dwarf. This is also in store for Sirius A in less than a billion years. The short lifespan makes this system unsuitable for life as we know it, at least, but there is one other aspect of the Sirius system that should be explained. Over the years, television programs and popular books have made the claim that the Dogon people of West Africa were impossibly aware of the companion star to Sirius A before such a thing could be detected, as it's nothing close to being visible to the naked eye. This was reported about a century ago by an anthropologist who was apparently unaware that previous visiting scientists looking to observe a solar eclipse might have told stories about the telescopic discovery of Sirius B, which was confirmed and observed in 1862, and that the Dogon might have been telling him about that. Then everything sort of went off a cliff in the 1970s, where people were claiming that the Dogon had contact with aliens from the Sirius system, and many books were sold. Trouble is, the Dogon are still around, and no one at the time seemed to think to go out and ask them for a clarification. In the early 1990s, further anthropological work found that none of this was quite the case. They found that the Dogon did revere the star to some degree, not surprising since many different peoples have, and it's useful in agriculture, calendars, navigation, etc. But they seemed to no longer have a coherent narrative surrounding the star as had been reported in the 70s and 80s pop culture. To some within their group, its appearance announced the beginning of a festival, but others said it was actually Venus, and sometimes the two were interchangeable. What they did seem to agree on is that they first learned information about the star from Western anthropologists rather than an alien. They even remembered specific names. Number 6. Tea Garden Star Tea Garden Star lies about 12 light years from our solar system, and is another red dwarf. Not surprising since they are by far the most common types of star in the universe. This star was unknown until relatively recently, it was only discovered in 2003. This in itself opens up a question. If dim red dwarfs like Tea Garden Star can remain undiscovered until modern times, then do other dim red dwarfs nearby remain undiscovered? That seems likely, and in the coming decades, more may come to light, and they may be very interesting indeed. Tea Garden Star, however, is barely a star at all, just slightly more massive than a brown dwarf. But the star system seems to host at least two Earth-sized exoplanets, both of which are marginally within the habitable zone of the star. It's hard to say whether these planets have maintained atmospheres and could have liquid water, that's still debated. The possibility of life is an even greater question. But this star system does illustrate that it's conceivable that the most likely star systems nearby, our solar system that might harbor life, may yet remain undiscovered. Number 5. Lalande 21185 Another red dwarf, Lalande 21185, sits at about 8.3 light years away. Though this is shrinking, and in just under 120,000 years, this star will pass only 4.6 light years from the sun. The star has been known for a while. The Land catalog dates from the early years of the 19th century. This star, while oddly classed as a variable star, is actually on the calmer end of things for a red dwarf. Most noteworthy about this star, however, are claims of a planet. This was actually one of the earliest claims for the detection of an exoplanet, going back to 1951, a time when it would be decades before we even confirmed the existence of planets outside the solar system, though in fairness, they were strongly suspected to be out there. But in 1974, the claims for this system were refuted, 
and it seemed that the system had no planets that were detectable at the time. Oddly, the same researcher that refuted the earlier claims would go on to announce the discovery of planets in the system in 1996. This world has also been called into doubt over the years, at least until the Keck Observatory seemed to have found indications of an unpredicted close-in planet in this system. Further study has shown that this planet is probably about three Earth masses, and whether it's actually there would be in an orbit that would place it too close to the star to be habitable, but given the changing nature of the question of whether the star system has a planet or multiple planets, more could very well be discovered. Number 4. Wolf 359 This star is a case where science fiction meets reality. For science fiction fans, this star was most famously the setting for the Battle of Wolf 359 between the Federation and the Borg in Star Trek The Next Generation, where things got just a little too close to Earth for comfort. But the star actually does really exist, and while little was said about it in Star Trek, it's actually quite an interesting neighbor to the Sun. Located just 8 light years away in the constellation Leo, Wolf 359 is a very dim red dwarf, even after being one of the closest star systems to us. The reason for this is that it's very faint and low mass, about 9% that of the Sun, and not that much larger than Jupiter, and is actually cool enough to allow for chemical compounds to form within it without being destroyed. But the star is also magnetically very active, more than the Sun is, and as a result is another flare star that undergoes sudden increases in luminosity, including X-rays. This particular star was first of interest to German astronomer Max Wolf, who was looking at the proper motions of stars, or how fast they appear to move through space. A high proper motion typically indicates that a star is close, though not always. Wolf's work was to catalog stars with high proper motions, and to this day the catalog remains in use, hence the term Wolf 359. It's number 359 in the catalog. But there's one aspect of Wolf 359 that makes it really interesting to a far future humanity. This star is fully convective, which means that it circulates its hydrogen throughout the star, including refueling the core. And it seems to be relatively young. This means that this star is going to last a ridiculously long period of time, to the tune of 8 trillion years. In comparison, the Sun will go red giant in about 4.5 billion years, and that's where exoplanets come in. In 2019, it was found that this system may have at least two planets within it. In the far future, perhaps some planet around the star might make for a second home for humanity, one that will last far longer than our system of origin and its current state. Number 3. Tau Ceti this star system differs a bit from many of the other entries on this list because it isn't just some tiny dim red dwarf, but a very sun-like star. Tau Ceti is a little smaller than the sun, about 78% its mass, but it's very similar in many other ways, and shares the same type G classification as the sun. If you were nearby on a planet in this system, this star would look a lot like the sun. Currently located 12 light years away, Tau Ceti is notable for being really calm, actually more so than the sun. And there is certainly material in this star system. It's a very dusty place with as much as 10 times what we have in this star system. More on that in a minute. And it's a problem for an otherwise important star to Ceti searches. In addition to being similar to the sun, Tau Ceti is believed to be older, though this is debated, but possibly as old as 10 billion years or more but probably closer to 5.8 billion years, or maybe a little younger, which, either way, would in principle give evolution on any planet in the system within the habitable zone plenty of time to form life and a civilization based on what happened here on Earth. The habitable zone of this star would be closer in than it is in our own solar system, but not that close in. It would land about the orbit of Venus if Tau Ceti were our sun. All of the similarities between this star system and our own have led to past SETI searches for signals to no avail, and while Tau Ceti does appear to have planets, at least five to date, two apparently within the habitable zone, we hear nothing. But then comes the debris, and that might provide an answer. This system appears loaded with comets and asteroids, and that's a problem for life, at least of any complexity. While simple life on these planets may exist, and maybe even more complex forms of life occasionally, it seems likely that things would simply get reset by impacts at a rate far higher than they happened here. 
On the other hand, the bulk of this debris seems to be outside of the habitable zone, which may change the equation. Regardless, this remains one of the best close-by systems in which to search for evidence of life in general. Number 2. Shulza's Star This red dwarf is interesting because we have apparently already interacted with it. Located at about 22 light years distant, this star wasn't discovered until 2013. After further research in 2015, it was announced that this star passed through our solar system's Oort cloud about 70,000 years ago. This star is thought to be a binary system, with the main star being a red dwarf and an orbiting brown dwarf, and they're similarly aged to the sun, with a minimum age of about 3 billion years old, but could be as much as 10 billion. This star's encounter with our Oort cloud is a little disconcerting. The reason is that it may have disturbed the Oort cloud when it passed by and that any comets disturbed from the cloud at that distance aren't here yet. Don't worry, they won't be here anytime soon. It's going to take nearly 2 million years for them to get here, but it's conceivable that they may do some damage to Earth, but will probably either be long gone by then or advanced enough to mitigate any threats posed, or so we hope, though at this point, we have plenty of warning time. Number 1. Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, and Proxima B Recently, an old question about the closest group of stars to us was answered. The question was whether Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the Sun, was actually a member of the Alpha Centauri system, or was just a free agent passing close by that system. It was found, however, that it is indeed a member, and is gravitationally bound to those stars. The main star system itself is called Alpha Centauri, which is really two stars. These stars are quite famous, but oddly they usually aren't mentioned under their official actual names, Rigel Centaurus and Ptolemon. They are both sun-like stars, one being class G, very much like the sun, and only a little larger, and the other is class K, which is smaller and cooler. While these stars may be of interest to a future humanity due to their proximity and similarity to the sun, the third member of this system is of particular interest right now. Orbiting somewhat distantly from the main pair is the red dwarf Proxima Centauri. This is actually the true closest star to the Sun, at just 4.24 light years. This star has a known planet, thought to be a bit larger than Earth, within its habitable zone. This planet, known as Proxima b, is of great interest in both the search for life on other worlds and the study of exoplanets due to how close it is. But there may be other member planets of the Alpha Centauri system. In 2013, an apparent transit of a planet was observed at Alpha Centauri b. This would not be a nice world if it exists, since it would orbit very closely to the star to the point of lava lakes on the surface. Models suggest that other planets could be in the main system, and given the similarities of these stars to the Sun, and the fact that Proxima Centauri may have played a role to send cometary material towards those planets early on, potentially delivering water, means that not only are they the closest stars to us, but are among the most interesting, very much so for a future humanity spreading into the galaxy, but also remain some of the best candidates close by for the search for life right now. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently recommending some content. Fans of this channel will know that I often use artwork from noted space artist John E. Kaufman. Wonderful, amazing art, but he also recently started a YouTube channel where you will be able to watch videos of him creating that space art, and up there now is a relaxing video of him rendering a Huna Mons on series. Links in the description and in the end screen. Enjoy and stay safe, be well, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.